sound speeds. And if you've ever done any kind of audio recording with your voice, be it singing or spoken word, then you probably heard that balanced sound is more desirable than unbalanced sound. But what's the deal? I mean, are they really all that different? Oh yeah, they are. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how different they are. But before I go onto the computer and give you a technical demonstration, let me set it up for you, starting with balanced sound. Imagine on the inside of this cable, there is a metal foil or braid shield with two cables going inside of it, okay? Running from the microphone end to the recorder interface or mixer that you have plugged into on the other side. Now, let's look at this end of where the two cables run into, the connector. This here is an XLR. One, two, three pins right there and one, two, three holes that it's gonna go to on, on the female, right? Now, pin number one, that outer metal casing that was either foil or braid running down the length, that is gonna go to pin number one because that's your ground. Pin number two is one of the cables running through the middle, and that is your positive or in-phase signal. And the other cable that was running through the middle of the foil or braid is the out-of-phase or negative signal. Now, what does that mean? Imagine a sound wave starting at a center line, going through a crest and then a trough. If that is the way the sound wave actually looks, then going through the crest first, then the trough would be in phase. Now, take a mirror image of that and flip it vertically. So that way it goes through the trough first and then the crest last. If it's an exact duplicate mirror image, then those two signals are going to be out of, uh, out of phase with each other, but identical. So that's the difference in phase. Rather than going through a crest first and then a trough, it is going to be the exact opposite of that mirror image below the line and, and above the line. Now, the reason why a microphone would do this and communicate this way is because if you can imagine, your audio signal looks like this. Now, if you duplicate it and then you were to flip one of them out of phase and then you were to put one of those in a separate line from your positive in phase signal and then you were to run this is let's just let's just say this is your positive in phase signal this is your negative out of phase signal and then you were to twist them very tightly into a little twisted pair and run it down the entire inside length of the cable and then wrap it with a braid or foil shield that's the way that it looks on the inside of this now why would you do that well, if you can imagine that since you have one that's in phase and one that's out of phase, if they encounter, because they're tightly round around each other, if you recall, twisted pairs, if they encounter any kind of electromagnetic interference, radio frequency interference, or any kind of interference whatsoever that makes it through that outer shield, then it's going to most likely affect both of those lines at the exact same amount or very close to it. Now, if you can imagine that there's a little bit of interference that gets through the shield and affects both of those cables on the inside, and then one of them is in phase and one of them is out of phase, they're going to have equal amounts of EMI and RFI on them, that interference I was talking about. On the other end, when you flip the out of phase back in phase and then combine them back, if you can imagine the interference of the out of phase signal is going to invert itself when it flips back with the signal. And when you combine the two together, it's going to cancel itself out. So you have your positive and negative signal. One of them inverts. They both encounter some interference that are exactly the same. And then when they combine again, it reverses and combines. So it negates out. That's the balanced system in action. Unbalanced is quite different. If you can imagine the cable on the inside, but instead of having two lines going on the inside of your shield, it only has one. Now you look at this and say, wait a minute, Alan, this is an XLR just like the other one was. Yes, it is. But look at this end. This end right here only has the tip and the sleeve. This is only two pins right here. So if you were to open this up, you would only have pin one going to your ground and pin two going to your signal. Most likely it could go, to, I guess, to the third, but most likely it's gonna be going to pin number two. Now this right here, because it has this this phone connector right here this uh 6.35 millimeter connector right here is your indicator because it only has a tip sleeve or ts that it's unbalanced now you may have a cable that comes from a, an inexpensive microphone company that comes with the microphone 
that has an XLR on both ends, but if you were to open up the connector, it only has pins one and pins two soldered on both ends of the connector. So if you buy an inexpensive microphone, you might want to take the connector apart and look and see if it has one, two, and three connected up. Now, what is the real deal here behind this? What's the big deal? Whether it has the in phase or out of in out of phase or just has the in phase signal. Well, let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you the difference. We're now on my computer where I have two audio files open. Let's start off by listening to each one of them independently or soloed by clicking the solo button right here. And we're going to start with this file called cleanaudio.wave. The goal is to have clean sound, and that usually means starting with the best possible signal to the lowest possible noise or signal to noise ratio. Oh yeah, that's some good sound. If we recorded sound like that and it was that clean, we'd be so happy and our audience would love it. Now let's listen to this file called badrfiemi.wave. And admittedly, this is not true RFIEMI wave uh, or, or sound. I made this myself. So, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, my wife and daughters are so proud of me. Okay, so those are the two audio files that we're dealing with here. There is the clean audio file, which is a good quality signal, but that's the way it was when it went into the microphone and came straight out of the microphone. But then let's just say we ran it through a 50-foot cable and it was unbalanced. So it picked up a bunch of EMI and RFI. Let's say we ran it over a high voltage cable and it picked up a bunch of just bad interference and we ran it by our computer and ran it around a power strip and just it picked up a whole bunch of really bad RFI and EMI. We're going to trim this out a little bit because the only sound that we really care about is this part right here in the middle. So let's get rid of the rest of it and listen to what our good quality sound sounds like after running through a bad unbalanced cable. The goal is to have clean sound and that usually means starting with the best possible signal to the lowest possible noise or signal to noise ratio. Garbage, complete garbage. On the recorder, mixer, or interface side, that's terrible. But that would be what it sounds like on an unbalanced cable. So we're going to render this now as not out of phase. That would be our in phase positive signal or on an unbalanced cable, the signal. But now what we have is we're going to do the exact same recording, but this time we now have a balanced cable. So remember pin three is the phase inverted. So what we need to do is just invert the phase on clean audio. Because remember, we invert the phase and then each one of those goes through its own cable wrapped tightly in a twisted pair down the line. So this is going from the microphone now to the recorder interface or mixer. So now what we're going to do is render this exact same th thing again. But the difference is now right here, phase inverted. That's all this is, is just going to be, I'm going to call this out phase now. Whoops, let's, let's, let's actually capitalize that correctly. Out phase. And we rendered it. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and delete those because we don't care anything more about them. And we're going to insert the files which are right here and right here in phase and out of phase. Now, we're going to be fair about this because you may say you might have pulled a trick, uh, you know, a trick here and swapped them on me. Well, I'm going to show you right now by soloing each one of them, starting with in phase. The goal is to have clean sound. And that usually means starting with the best. Okay, that sounds about like what it was, right? The goal is to have clean sound. And that usually means starting same thing out of phase. So that's the way that our sound on each of the two lines that went from the balanced through the balance cable from the microphone to the interface recorder or mixer. But the thing is that you, we have not done yet so far is inverted the phase from here back up here and combined the two of them. So our out of phase signal now is going to have our phase inverted. So now let's hear what it sounds like when the two of them are back together. The goal is to have clean sound, and that usually means starting with the best possible signal to the lowest possible noise or signal to noise ratio. Sounds like voodoo, doesn't it? But I tell you, it works. Now, in fairness, if we were to not invert it, then in that case, then we have our signal that we cared about, but it was still out of phase, remember? So, Instead, now what we have is our noise is doubled because remember our sound went like this and inverted and we combined it. So those two, uh, the crest and troughs are exactly out of phase, but now our, inf our interference has actually doubled. So if we listen to this now without phase reversing the out of phase signal, 
we have no signal at all anymore. All it is is noise. That's the reason why the balance signal is so important to have on a cable because the balance signal by doing that phase inversion on the pin three of an XLR cable right there, that little bitty bit of voodoo sounding thing, that's what the, the, the secret sauce is right there. That is what makes a balance signal so good because it does the phase inversion. That's just one thing it it is doing cable wise to try to eliminate bad sounds that you don't care anything about. The bad sounds from electromagnetic interference, from radio frequencies, anything that could potentially affect a cable. Because remember, a cable is just a bunch of copper going through there. And copper is the same thing that can be made into an antenna. So a cable is potentially an antenna. So by doing this, you're basically inverting out those sounds that you don't care anything about and potentially the interference that would come from radio and any kind of interference that would come through the cable being used as an antenna. So there you have it in a demonstration, plain as day, right here that you can hopefully make some sense of. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Soundspeeds. Be sure to tune in the future for more technical demonstrations, information, and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.